we're going to explore the symmetry and periodic nature of trigonometric functions. It's this periodicity of those functions that gives them so much power and has really transformed our society. Let's talk about what it means for something to be periodic. The de definition of period is the domain it takes to make one complete cycle of a function. And a function is periodic if there's a number such that adding that number to any other number on the function will result in the same number. In other words, f of t plus that period is equal to f of t. In another way, it repeats itself every p. And this must occur for every number in the domain of f. The smallest number for which this is periodic is called the period. Let's look at the periodic properties of the sine and cosine functions, which is really what makes them so special and gives us the ability to model things. If we look at the sine and cosine functions, you can intuitively see their periodic nature, the fact that they do repeat themselves. Looking at this blue function, which is the sine function, you can see over a certain amount of space in the domain, it repeats itself. Like if we start at zero, for instance, and we continue up and down through pi, down to three pi over two, and back up to two pi, this entire domain space makes one period that repeats itself over and over again, this pattern. This is really one of the big patterns we need you to memorize, and that is the pattern of the sine wave between 0 and 2 pi. And if you zoom out, you really see how this thing repeats itself over and over again. Now I'm going to put the cosine graph up, and you can see cosine makes another pattern that repeats itself, starting at 1, at theta equals zero, going all the way down to negative one at pi, and then coming all the way back up to one by two pi. This little valley pattern for cosine repeats itself to the left and to the right of that original zero to two pi domain. I'm gonna show sine and cosine, and by the way, there are certainly some similarities there, which we're gonna to get to later, not in this lesson. But if we start to zoom out, you can see that this behavior goes on forever. And that's a very good thing because so many other things in our universe repeat themselves like this. Now that we've notionally defined what it means for something to be periodic, let's specifically look at the periodic properties of the sine and the cosine functions. The sine function, if we take any value t for the input and add 2 pi to it, we're going to get the same value for the sine. For example, the sine of 0 is the same as the sine of 0 plus 2 pi. The sine of 0 is 0, the sine of 0 plus 2 pi, which is 2 pi, is also 0. And this is true for any other value of the sine function. The same is th true for cosine. The cosine of any value in the domain plus 2 pi is equal to the cosine of that point in the domain. For example, let's look at the cosine of pi, for example. The cosine of pi is negative 1. The cosine of pi plus 2 pi, or 3 pi, must also be negative 1. This idea that something repeats itself every 2 pi means that for a certain point in the function, if we look up 2 pi forward from it, we're going to get that same value. So we would say that the, the two functions, the sine and the cosine, are periodic, and they have a period of 2 pi. So the sine and cosine have a period of 2 pi, as we've just seen, the blue function the purple function, they repeat themselves every 2 pi. Well now I'm going to get rid of those functions and let's talk about the tangent function. What's its period? Well it's a little bit different. If we look from 0 to 2 pi, the tangent function has actually gone through two complete cycles. If we want to find one complete cycle, let's start at the input equals pi over 2 and then we'll go to 3 pi over 2. From pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, it makes a complete cycle. So 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is equal to pi. Period of the tangent function is pi. It goes from negative infinity to positive infinity in pi radians, a very busy function. So it has a period of pi. So let's define the periodic properties of the tangent function. Like the sine and cosine function, it is periodic. However, the period is pi for the tangent function instead of 2 pi. So what we would say mathematically is that the tangent of any value t is equal to the tangent of t. So the tangent of some value along the horizontal axis is going to be the same as the tangent of that same point 
plus pi along the axis. So we would say that the tangent function is definitely periodic and it has a period of pi. It makes a complete cycle every pi rate. Periods repeat themselves forever, continuously, both in the positive and negative directions. So the sine of t plus or minus any multiple of 2 pi is going to be the sine of t. And any multiple means let's put a value of k that represents any integer in, and it could be t plus or minus 2 pi if k is 1. It could be t equals plus or minus 4 pi if k is 2, and so on and so on. Uh, the same is true for the cosine. Its period is 2 pi, so the cosine of t plus or minus any multiple of 2 pi, which we'll call 2k pi, is equal to cosine of t. For the tangent, again, the period is pi, so just a little bit different. The tangent of t plus or minus k times pi instead of 2 pi is equal to the tangent of t. And this allows us to express in very concise way these sine, cosine, and tangent functions go on forever. Let's look at an example. So we're going to use the properties of trigonometric functions for t equals pi over 6 our input value at pi over 6, or 30 degrees, to find t where functions are the same. The sine and cosine have a period of 2 pi, so if we take that value of pi over 6 and add 2 pi to it, we will get a point along the function where the value of sine and cosine are the same. And if we add pi over 6 to 2 pi, we get a common denominator of 6, so that would be pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6, and gives us a total of 13 pi over 6. At both pi over 6 and 13 pi over 6, the sine is 1 half. The sine of pi over 6 is a half, so the sine of 13 pi over 6 is also a half. For the cosine, the same thing is true. Cosine of pi over 6 is the same as the cosine of pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Common denominator of 6, pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6, would give us 13 pi over 6, where the cosine has the same value as at pi over 6. At pi over 6, the cosine has a value of the square root of 3 over 2. Now, tangent's got a period of pi, so the tangent of pi over 6 is going to be equal to the tangent of pi over 6 plus pi. Common denominator of 6, we get pi over 6 plus 6 pi over 6, gives us a tangent value of 7 pi over 6, where it is going to be the same as the tangent at pi over 6. At pi over 6, the tangent is the square root of 3 over 3. Let's talk about the odd and even nature of the trigonometric functions, but first let's do a quick review of what it means for a function to be odd or even. If a function is symmetric about the y-axis, in other words, if we can flip reflect it about the y-axis and have the same picture, it is even. If we can reflect a function about the origin and it's symmetric with the origin, then we call that function odd. We test for this by substituting negative x for x in the function. By doing that, we create a reflection about the y-axis or the origin. The function is even if that test results in the same value. If f of negative x equals f of x, then that means we can flip that function about the y-axis. We're changing the sign of the input, and we get the same output. The function is unchanged. However, if we do f of negative x equals negative f of x, then the function is odd because what's happening is it's being reflected about the origin. It's actually changing the, the value of the function from positive to negative or negative to positive when we put that input in there. So if the signs change, it's odd. If it's unchanged, it's even. If neither happens, then it's, it's neither, and, and most functions are not symmetrics. However, the trigonometric functions are. The cosine function is even, as we're going to see in a second. We can flip the cosine function about the y-axis and get the same values. And this is important because it leads to an identity that the cosine of negative t is equal to the cosine of t. So for example, the cosine of negative 5 pi over 6 is equal to the cosine of 5 pi over 6. The sine and the tangent functions, however, can be reflected not about the y-axis, but about the origin, as you'll see graphically in a second. So the sine of negative t is equal to the negative of the sine of t, and the tangent of negative t is equal to the negative tangent of t. For example, the sine of negative 5 pi is going to be equal to the negative of the sine of 5 pi. So let's look at graphically even and odd symmetries look like. The pink function you see there is the cosine function from negative 2 pi 
all the way to 2 pi. And you can see very clearly here, and this cosine function is symmetric about the y-axis. Everything over here, this valley shape, is repeated exactly on the left-hand side. The left and right-hand side of the y-axis are mirror images of each other. Thus, the cosine function is even. Let's look at the sine function. Not true of the sine function. If I took this and reflected it about the right-hand side about the left-hand side, I'd wind up with something that looked like my hand is doing here. So it's definitely not an even function. However, it is odd if we reflected this sine curve on the right-hand side about the origin, we, everything on the top would reflect to the bottom. We would say that the sine function is odd. The tangent function is also odd. Clearly, you can see it's not even. It's not symmetric about the y-axis. But if we flip the right-hand side over the origin, kind of like folding a piece of paper on itself, we would see that the tangent function is odd. So let's do an example and use the properties of trigonometric functions, specifically their symmetry, at a value of t equals pi over 4 to find the sine of negative pi over 4, cosine of negative pi over 4, and the tangent of negative pi over 4. Since the sine and tangent are odd, the sine of negative t is equal to the negative of sine t. So the sine of negative pi over 4 is equal to the negative of the sine of pi over 4. Since the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2, the negative of that would be the negative square root of 2 over 2. Similarly for the tangent, the tangent of negative t is going to equal to the negative of tangent t. So to find the tangent of negative pi over 4, we just have to find the tangent of pi over 4 and put a negative sign in front of it. And at pi over 4, the opposite and adjacent are equal, so tangent of pi over 4 is 1. The negative of tangent pi over 4 will be negative 1. So the tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. Since the cosine function is even, cosine of negative t is equal to the cosine t. It's reflected about the y-axis. So the cosine of negative pi over 4 is equal to the cosine of pi over 4. Since the cosine of pi over 4 is also the square root of 2 over 2, so would the cosine of negative pi over 4 be.